Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Sag Glitch, aka Sag. Today, I'm bringing you a little bit of a vlog, a little bit of an update. Basically, I don't really know if these are vlogs or just telling you what's going on in the week of Sag. But uh, not a whole lot went on this past week or weekend. Uh, mainly been doing a lot of stuff, especially on the weekend. Um, was relaxing, it was double XP weekend on Call of Duty didn't really take advantage of it because I had a lot of stuff going on whether it's work or helping the in-laws move whatever it is um, there's stuff outside gaming that needs better attention or quick uh, more attention than gaming so when that happens uh, you know just kind of have to come with it as this and uh, let it be but uh, yeah what has happened I believe it was Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday I get home after working overnights I sleep in the afternoon I wake up I try not to sleep too much because I hate wasting the day look how I mean look how nice it is right now it's like two o'clock in the afternoon and it's beautiful out and it's uh, actually getting a lot warmer yesterday or no Saturday it was 90 degrees in sunny sunny Florida in April which means it's gonna be a horrible horrible summer it's gonna be extremely hot that's why I got my pool going actually this coming weekend is the first time I'm going to be using it. Regardless of how cold it is, I'm jumping in. But, uh, yeah, um, what happened? Anyway, I come home, I sleep, I wake up, and I hear my dog. She usually sits at this uh, um, this uh, glass slider right here, looks outside. I let her, you know, enjoy the day while I'm, while I'm asleep. And uh, she somehow hurt her paw. And when I wake up, I use the restroom, and I come out, and she's holding her, like, she's sitting on the ground holding her paw like this, I'm like, oh, God, what happened? And, uh, you guys have seen Goober. She is incredibly annoying at the same time. She is, she is the most awesome dog in the world. Um, everyone feels that way about her dog, and I'm a huge pet lover, so, uh, she's, uh, yeah. So, I was terrified of what happened. Maybe she hurt her paw, maybe she broke it, and so... I look up on uh, online what it could be, and guys, don't ever do that. First thing you do, check it out, see what's going on. Don't look online because the fact of the matter is basically WebMD. Anytime you have a cough, WebMD says you're gonna die. Uh, there was actually this was a little bit more helpful. Uh, looked at what it could have been. It could have been whether it was her nails, her tendons, her um, her pads on the bottom of her feet what it could be and so I look nothing was going on so I think you know I was sitting there I was texting my wife I was a little bit of an a-hole to my wife just because like she had stuff going on but at the same time you know this is our dog I wanted her to help me like figure out what's going on as soon as that worked really nothing she could do uh, apparently two o'clock it's not the time to do this but anyway um so basically, I was massaging the dog's foot, making sure, speaking of which, she's looking straight at me, but uh, I was massaging the dog's foot, getting, you know, just being as tender as I could with her and uh, trying to figure out what's going on. Finally, I let it be, let her relax for a little bit, and she started putting more weight on it, so which is a good sign. Um, you know, and I, we kept massaging and kept massaging, and she started walking better. So we were like, "All right, maybe she just, uh, you know, did something funny to her paw. She's all right. So she's good now. Uh, got a little bit of a scare. I was really pissed off because the fact that I was going to have to pay a vet bill on top of getting my oil changed. Oh, rewind it back. Actually, this is a couple days later. All right, so." my Friday and Saturday is basically Thursday and Friday and um, I scheduled the appointment my um, SUV needed an oil change so I scheduled appointment 7 o'clock in the morning on Thursday for 4 o'clock yeah 4 o'clock in the afternoon I get to Goodyear and I'm like, okay, well, they're a little backed up. The guy even told me they're a little backed up. It's going to take a little bit of time. A little bit of time. Guys, I brought my car in. I checked in at like 345. I didn't leave till 615. And I know how to change my oil. It's just, it's basically impossible where I live because you can't do any work outside in your car. 
and have nowhere else to go. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I get there again, four o'clock appointment. I'm sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. There's a couple people come in after me, and uh, it's like five, five fifteen before they even take it in. Okay, what happened to the four o'clock appointment? You want to be in the video? You want to say hi? Come here. Hi. You want to say hi? All right. Yeah. Look. Look. Okay. All right. So anyway, uh, back to the story. <laughs> um, she. Uh, we get there. They don't take it in until five fifteen. I'm already kind of ticked off as it is. I understand being backed up, but. You know, I, I have an appointment. Why set an appointment if you're not going to honor it, regardless of what's going on? Um, I mean, it's a quick oil change. You know, maybe while in between you guys are tired, do a quick oil change, get a break, set the car back out, whatever. I know I'm being a little selfish, but at the same time, for me, when you run a business, you make sure you honor all the things. And I understand, again, I'm very understanding to the point. But when you take my car in at 5.15, and then it's getting worked on, taking a little bit of time, a guy comes in saying he needs a complete uh, will and, um, I guess I'm not big in the car, so will and a rim replacement or whatever. Like, he completely messed his car up. They took him in, gave him a complete new will and rim without being, without having an appointment. They took him in, and he got out, 30 minutes before me they must have been working on his car non-stop because of how bad it was sounding from this guy and the fact that the matter is hey I mean you have my car in you stop what you were doing on my car help him send him on his way and then when I say something to you about how long it took you get an attitude with me and say you know well we were really backed up and I was like well I understand that but at the same time like a oil change shouldn't take two and a half hours basically and so they started getting an attitude and the guy the manager comes out he's basically like you know hate to be the bearer of bad news you need new brake pads which understandable um and the fact that he's trying to charge i pretty much they're price gouging me because they're trying to charge 194 for brake front brake pads and that's it and i'm just like are you serious dude so not only did I have to wait, but I'm getting price gouged for an estimate on brake pads. Come on, yeah. All right, I'm gonna put you down because you're, you're in the shot. Yeah, I know you're having a great day. All right. Oh, okay. Well, she just jumped. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's that's that with the whole car situation the car's not doing bad it just needs new brake pads which I'm still in the process of getting in touch with my wife's friends who could do it at a discounted price um, and they actually do a really well job I put her down see what happens good boy it's okay so all right so Friday comes I got my wife uh, I usually get a ducky donuts uh, for her in her class every Friday um, it's just a thing I do to help the kids out. The kids actually enjoy it. My wife enjoys her hot chocolate. I get myself a little bit of an iced coffee. That way I can just relax in the morning, get my day going. And uh, so it's been like three weeks since I've done that. No, two weeks since I did because last week was uh, spring break. And, you know, a couple of times before that I probably couldn't get it done. Um, well, get the wrong size get home I'm like hey uh, was it 25 or 50 and she goes 50 I was like I thought the box looked small and she goes well let's let them all get one sorry kids um, but start that up relax shoot a couple videos play with the guys and um, that's basically my Friday Friday comes and goes so fast it's like it's like when you're working, time seems to drag on, but when you're off, it just like condenses as little as possible. Um, Saturday comes. I work Saturdays from 8 to 4. Let me tell you about this Saturday. I 
Okay, this this just sums it up before I go in there. I was ready to build a ramp to one of the residents. And if you guys don't know, or if you're new, I, I work in security. And I work for a residential, a private residential uh, community. And um, I'm actually one of the main supervisors on the site. And uh, basically to sum up this Saturday, I was ready to build a ramp into a guy's second story multi-million dollar home just to hit him no with the with the car I drive no lie guys I was I was to the point where I was done we had a 180 person guest list which it, it's a pretty big event going through one gate having one lane to do it it's gonna be tough well not only did they do that they <laughs> Not only did they do that, <laughs> sorry guys, excuse me. All right, she, I guess she just really wants to be part of the video today. Okay, all right, so back up. She really wants to be. One take. Hey, look, look at the camera. Okay, anyway, so um, one lane, 180 people. We have at approximately at any time 60 cars come through the gate in one hour. So everyone coming in at one time, about, well, there were a couple in, so I'm going to say 150 people in one hour plus 60, so that's 210. On average for me, I'm a pretty fast typer, I know what I'm doing, 215 cars would take about an hour, no lie. Um, it just so happened that it was the newest person who wasn't the most knowledgeable on the thing no one covered for the event because we usually have extra people come up if it's a if it's a big event no one came so i'm like i'm trying to get in the community i'm like oh my god since we had the cars backed up from the gate all the way back to the to the road and i was like i gotta get in there i gotta get this going i'm a supervisor let me take care of everything so i go in i'm like hey what's going on the newest person said, hey, you know, I'm a little overwhelmed. These are what's going on. They're coming all at the same time as well as the guests coming in. I was like, all right, I tell you what. Let me handle the computer. You take any calls. I'm handling the computer. I'm handing out passes. I'm logging in the cars as much as possible. It's still taking a long time. I'm getting res I, At the same time, I'm handling people's calls about the complaints of getting in the community. I understand that at the same time. I'm doing what I can. I'm explaining to these guys very professionally that I'm doing what I can. You just got to hold on. I'll get you through very shortly. So basically, after about five minutes of that, as well, I'm hearing my other employee getting yelled at on the phone. So I'm like, hey, what's going on? She comes over. She's overwhelmed as it is. She starts getting a little flustered and to the point where it's upsetting her. She's kind of holding in tears and I look at him like hey look I was like I need you to go to the bathroom compose yourself and come out and, and come out and tell me and she's not wanting to leave because she feels horrible that I'm here helping her out and she's you know upset and I told her I'm like look I've been here way too long go in the bathroom compose yourself I can handle anything that's going on we'll just leave that gun hold until we get there hi yeah hello go Look, I'm doing a video. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, she's like, say what? But uh, get the line down eventually. Get a call while getting the line down from residents. I'm like, look, guys. Yeah. And so I get a call afterwards after I'm writing all these. So, so like anything that happens, any complaint you get, anything you have to write a report. I'm writing these reports in regards to everything that's going on. On top of that. I'm dealing with a guy who needs answers for this and it has nothing to do with security. Go figure. And I tell the guy that and he apologized. He apologized to for upsetting my other guard. And you know, he even told me not to boost my own confidence because I care less about recognition, but he basically told me because of my professionalism and my information given to him, I not only calmed him down, but at the same time made him a lot happier than what he was. So, uh, you know, kudos for SAG, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Basically, I was just trying to make him happy as a customer and trying to do the best I can at the time to, 
you know, do my job. So we finally get the line down. An hour afterwards, the same guy who called me in line talking about not being able to get in calls me again just to, to let me know how bad of a job I did. And I was like, what do you want from me? Like two people handling one gate for like 300 cars in an hour and a half tops? Dude, I could run around you and spin heads if you were in that gate. Like, yeah, I would love to see him do the same thing because he sits at home and works at home. I don't know what he does, and I'm sure his job is hard as, as well. But I'm not going to sit there and tell him that he does a horrible job. If he does a horrible job to me, I'm not going to berate him and then call back and berate him again. That's not, that's not my thing. If you're doing a bad job, I'll let you know, but I'm not going to call back. So I'm trying to... I'm trying to uh, let this guy know, you know, I apologize for the wait, but I have certain procedures that I have to do to get people in. That should be enough, not enough for him. So I was like, all right, sir, well, I apologize for the inconvenience that it caused you. I tried the best solution that I could think of. What I'm gonna do is write a report to my director so he can see it and we can go over this information at a later time. He's not having any of it. I was like, all right, sir, we'll have a great day hung up on him. Couldn't help it, you know? Um, there you go. Alright, yeah. yeah. Be careful, babe. Be careful. Go away. Go squirrels. Squirrels. Squirrels! Go! <laughs> Just trying to finish up this video. So, Sunday comes. Uh, my uh, mother and father-in-law are in the process of moving, but as they're in hiatus in between houses, they have a RV. Um, a huge, 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 multi hundred thousand. Like I, I don't even know how much it costs. I don't want to know how much it costs. It's basically a home on wheels. It is awesome. Um, they invite us out to their new place, uh, actually, a, aka the RV, and uh, just to have dinner to say thanks for helping move some stuff into our garage and hold it for them while they are in the process of moving. Um, so we did. Had a great cookout. Goober got to play with her best friend. Um, and uh, yeah, so killed some burgers while we were there and came back. And I was exhausted. And knowing myself, I have to go to like take a quick nap, maybe an hour, hour and a half before work just to get me through the night. And then when I get home, I sleep. But um, yeah, had a great day. Uh, I got a shave, got to get a haircut. My hair is long as shit. Uh, got a sunburn like for only being out for how fair skinned I am I gotta start wearing sunscreen while working on Saturdays during this hot sunny sunny Florida um, but yeah. hey guys uh, welcome back I know this is a little different and if you're wondering what's a little different right now with me is my wife was nice enough to come home and she needed a haircut she was like well if you want one I can pay for it which is a nice little gift from her so I got my hair cut on expense of her got shaved still but another thing I missed before I get into this nice little arcade box for the month of March um, another thing I missed was we went to a, a theater on Friday and uh, we were kind of lied to about it not being church service but uh, being regular music from our church band but it was a it was a service but what was weird about it was it was at a theater that served drinks so it was like church at a bar where you drink alcohol and listen to a sermon so it kind of counterbalanced itself I, I don't know it was weird to me too so I felt kind of awkward but yeah I did get a drink before the service started so what do you know plus four dollar waters church come on but uh anyway let's get into this unboxing I'm super excited because actually it's the 20th anniversary of Resident Evil and they promised something from it can't wait to see what's in there uh, so yeah again the month of March and first off okay that's pretty cool okay I'll get to that very shortly um, right ahead you get the shirt on top of everything but okay I'm eh. okay. alright let's get into it <laughs> wow okay for all you uh oh, 
Hello, I got a little friend here. Uh, she was in the video earlier. She wants to, oh, you want to say bye? No, it's not yours, it's mine. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see. Um, it, it's kind of awkward, uh, Mega Man toy. There's no nose, no face, no expression, just, he's like this, I'm gonna blast you away. But uh, that's basically his expression, so it's kind of creepy to me, but uh, I do remember uh, Mega Man 9, or Mega Man, I, I can't remember exactly which one it was that got me started. There was also one for the PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2, one of the two, that I played for hours on end, and just, I couldn't get enough of it. Didn't beat it, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, a little Mega Man toy. He's got his little blaster here, so uh, definitely going to find a little room. Maybe put him next to Scorpion from the other arcade blocks, but uh, yeah. So uh, let's put him down. I'm super excited to look at this thing. Um, there's obviously something from Resident Evil, but let's get this thing next. Okay. Uh, some nesting dolls. Huh. And it looks like from Pokemon. Huh? Nesting dolls are cool. Nesting dolls are cool. Do you know what nesting dolls are? Are they the ones like the Russian dolls where they pop out of each yeah. other? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so we got the nesting dolls, which... Yeah. Okay. Um... I'm trying to think where this is from. Um, I might have to... I can't remember the names of them. These are obviously, obviously, obviously Pokemon. So let's look and see. And there was a new Pokemon game that came out uh, here lately on the 3DS, I, I think. But uh, okay, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it off for you. You got the the one that is evolved the most. You got the second evolution of the series right here. Let's let's just take them out as we go. Okay, and so next up, and then, oh, there we go. Oh, look at this little booger. Oh, there's another one inside that one. Wow. Okay, you got this little booger, and then, and then you got the little happy one at the very end. Wait. All right, wow. Okay. There's a little bit too many nesting dolls here. If you hear that, that's a little ball on the ground that Goober keeps stepping on. Okay. Oh, and it's the Pokeball. It's a very small one. That is awesome. Wow. I feel really bad right now. I mean, I knew it was from Pokemon, but I am for a loss of... No way. Is it? Oh, I was about to say. It is about to get ridiculous in here. But, uh... I feel kind of bad not knowing which Pokemon this is. It is one I should know because I recognize the face. But, uh, yeah, you got five little ones. You got this, 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 this. And we'll put them back in just to uh, put down the, uh, the amount of area it takes in. But, uh, yeah, that is super cool. I haven't seen nesting dolls since, like, I was a young kid. And my mom had the little Russian nesting dolls for Christmas that we used to take out. So we just don't mind me. So we got that in, put that to the side. Next up, okay, I'm gonna say this is second to last because t-shirts are usually my favorite, but because there's a Resident Evil thing in here, I'm gonna have to hold that off to second to last. Okay, this is the Arcade Block exclusive. For you guys, I we got a Just Calls 3 shirt. Um, Two months ago, I believe. Yeah, two months ago, because last month was the Charmander and Charizard one. We have the Just Cause 3 Grapple Hook Memo Clip. And, guys, I... There's a... I, it used to be out here. I just actually updated my uh, ch my board. But there's a little marker board that I use to kind of put up clips, notes, and things that I go with my YouTube stuff. 
I leave notes everywhere and I can never figure out where I put certain notes. So when I write them down, I try to keep them in a notebook. But if not, if I have a little something, I always seem to lose it. So with this, I'm definitely going to have to take it out of the box to see because it looks like, and obviously the grapple hook is like the main thing from Just Cause 3 that shows uh, people using it. It's like the little gimmick for Just Cause 3, which I see a lot of people having fun with. So let's take this out of the box if we can. There's a lot of stuff on it. Yeah, okay. All right. So we have the little memo card right here. Just says Just Cause and it says exclusive for Nerd Block and Square Square Enix 2015. Um, uh, uh, okay, got the knife still. Let me just kind of pop that open. Oops, so. Sorry, guys, you gotta be careful. Okay. I think that's, oh wow. Okay, that, okay, this is kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. It is just, it's strictly the grapple, okay, I don't know if you guys can see it from there, but there is a, let's see, how's it, good? oh, there's a clip in the back, okay. So, if you guys can see, it's, okay, I've basically put it up against this. This right here is exactly what you're seeing. There's a arm that is fist out and it has the grapple hook. This is the grapple hook as if it's, oh, that's kind of sharp, as if it's coming out. And there's a little clip on the back that keeps a little business card or whatever kind of note you want it. It clips onto that and you can just hold it here. So like the little notes I write or like when I do, when I do these vlogs, I sit here and write notes down and I'm not like going back and forth going crazy. I might have to put that right in front of me with the little grapple hook in the air saying, Hey, Sag, this is your little teleprompter kind of thing showing the notes on the day so let's go ahead and put that up before it gets ruined uh that thing is really cool and honestly i haven't played just cause but i have watched a couple videos on it a lot of people having a lot of fun with it so uh that being said that's actually really cool um definitely going to put that up at least utilize something with it and uh when i get the uh the bookcase i plan on getting uh, with my wife because my wife's side of the office it looks really nice she's got two nice little bookcases all that i got just a just a uh just a desk right now that has a lot of stuff underneath it which she was nice enough to put all of these uh all the boxes she flattened out and put all the actual things that were inside of the boxes into one tote so we're gonna have to go back through it relive actually relive some of the moments because i haven't seen some of the stuff since opening it up but uh yeah so let's go ahead and ooh, if we can just yeah just fit it right in there go back to your styrofoam tomb and uh put it right back in where it went like it never happened guys because you know when you go in department stores you open up games and you put it back in, it's like it never happened, right? Oh, you guys don't do that? I I don't do it. What? What what just happened? No. Okay. Forget all that erase. My wife's looking at me like I'm stealing stuff. Don't worry, babe. I'm not. It's cool. Whatever. Just look at me like I'm crazy. Um, but yeah, one of the again, one of the biggest things I am excited for, if you guys don't know Nemesis, um I am Resident Evil is probably one of the biggest franchises in video game history. It's one of the biggest games that has impacted uh, not only my love for video games, but my love for horror as well. And when you have a when you have a good story when it comes to scary video games, it makes it that much more better. Uh, that much, that much better. My wife, okay, that much better. Sorry, guys, my wife's yelling at me. Um, but Nemesis, his first appearance in the actual game, I want to say, was, uh, it was in Director's Cut. Uh, you had to get away from him at the end. But, uh, he really didn't make his presence known until, uh, Resident Evil 3 against, um, I want to say Jill, but I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while since I relived that. 
in my head. Um, Resident Evil 3 was also the first time Ada Wong appeared. No, Resident Evil 2 was the first time Ada Wong appeared. But I have to see this. This better be awesome quality. Some Okay, so before we open it, it says Resident Evil is known for its iconic uh, creatures. And when it comes to the more memorable ones, Nemesis is in a class of its own. Created by the number six laboratory in the European office under direct orders from the Umbrella Corporations. The goal of Nemesis was to create a new type of B.O.W., which is biological weapon and that would carry out orders faithfully and precisely it's improved intellect or er, it's imp improved intelligence allowed it to make its own decisions and to operate complex weapons its main weapon was the rocket launcher and so this my friends wow Oh my, okay, so I gotta be really careful with this because I, this is like one of the things that I do want to keep really well taken care of for the office is, wow. Okay, the detail in this, uh, you guys can't see it, but if, I don't know, I'll bring it to you guys, but, okay, so he's basically... He's, he's immovable, which is okay because he's a figurine. Um, his stance right here basically shows what the Nemesis is all about. His rocket launcher on one side. Okay, so my wife told me to put it a little bit closer. If you guys see your bag, I, I'm sorry, but uh, they, did, they didn't like go... They went all out on the specifics of Nemesis. Uh, if you see... His rocket launcher on the left side over here. His outfit with the um, the little basically overall jacket that he has. The um, the veins that go to his neck. His face. Can you, I don't know if it's... It might be just downward looking. Can you see his face? Um, his face has got that mean menacing grin. His eyes has that... Or excuse me. His eye. Because his other eye was stapled shut is completely looking at you like he's crazy and then his other hand um basically opened up to grab whoever comes uh just makes it perfect as far as i go with the uh, nemesis character uh, i actually been looking at possibly getting uh some other figures from the resident evil franchise to put up but they are extremely expensive for some reason and but the nemesis is definitely one to start uh if it would have been anything else it would have been either chris redfield jill valentine or even the iconic zombie on the director's cut which is inadvertently my uh background on the computer right now which my wife is very fond of so oh one last thing before we get in it. Um, back it up, back it up. Oh, and a little update. Uh, we gave my sister-in-law the map of Hyrule, and uh, she loved it. So she was really geeking out over that. And uh, it was funny because that my father and mother-in-law were there as well, and her boyfriend. They didn't really get it, and my father-in-law was making fun of both of us. But uh, she understood. She enjoyed it. So... Uh, I was glad to give her that and also guys the okay so all right so Deadpool this is obviously a Deadpool t-shirt uh, it's made in the style of Donkey Kong the original Donkey Kong it's got the little ladders the tacos <laughs> and like the carrots and everything it's awesome um, but yeah, it's made like the old school Donkey Kong. Uh, Deadpool was probably one of the biggest uh, superhero movies in ever to be made. Uh, I only heard great things about it. Um, I've yet to see it. I saw part of it uh, from the other officer that was working the gate one night. He had a bootleg copy. Saw a couple of minutes of it. What I saw, I really liked. Really made me want to see it eventually. Um, not big on superheroes though. So with that being said, 
Deadpool making me want to see it is a big thing. Um, but yeah, that's that's crazy. The little Donkey Kong. I will definitely be using that the little onions, the tacos, the killing it. But uh, yeah, going to have a great time with that. Um, but I was actually really surprised with this box. Um, even though the only thing I might not like per se and I don't know if it's just because the way they purposely made it or if I just don't get it but th this thing is is kind of like uh, you know I, I could do without to be honest with you and if I didn't get uh, my little Mega Man bud right here I would have been perfectly fine with what I got because honestly the next thing is is pretty cool uh, obviously I love 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 this might trump the t-shirt the nemesis might trump the t-shirt on the favorite thing in the box but i was super happy to see that they were doing something for the uh, resident evil 20th anniversary but with that being said guys my wife's getting tired of holding the camera i gotta go we got stuff to do but i hope you guys enjoyed the video leave a like if you did comment if you want to subscribe if you haven't make sure you check it out in the description below for my channel as well as my twitter and i hope you guys have a great day i'll see you next time peace